first. Cares. The midterm elections are just six weeks from today, and they were on the president's mind last night. He tweeted in all caps at 10.38 p.m., quote, remember the midterms. That'll do the trick. Just out this morning, an NBC News Marist poll has a virtual tie in Arizona's U.S. Senate race, 48 percent mm -hmm. for Democratic Congressman Congresswoman, excuse me, Kirsten Cinema, and 45 percent for Republican Congresswoman Martha McSally. New polling from the University of North Florida, meanwhile, has Democrat Andrew Gillum leading Republican Ron DeSantis in Florida in that governor's race, mm -hmm. 47 to 43. And a dead even race in the state's U.S. Senate contest with 45 percent each for Senator Bill Nelson and Governor Rick Scott. President Trump tweeted just a few minutes ago about that Republican Party saying favorability is the highest it's been in seven years, three points higher than Democrats. At 45 percent in the Gallup poll, Republicans actually only one point higher than the Democrats, not three, as the president claims. The latest Gallup weekly tracking poll puts President Trump's approval rating to 40 percent. That's 16 points below his disapproval rating, which is at 56 percent. Joining us now is Promise, national political correspondent for All NBC right. News and MSNBC Steve Kornacki. His book, Aww. The Red well, and the Blue, awesome. the 1990s and the Birth of Political Tribalism, is coming out Congratulations. a week from today. Can I say, Willie, really, this Red is blue. much better than his last book. Yeah. I'm, I'm mad as hell and I'm going to rip your head off. Yes. <laughs> I, mean, no, it's, no, that one is, I think tank. this one that is out of my I like that. I don't know. Where does the anger come from? I like the red and the blue. So mm -hmm. look at those polls we just ran through. What jumps out at you the most? Yeah, I mean, Arizona, it, it confirms what I think we've been talking about, that Arizona is the most likely pickup opportunity for Democrats. Remember, they need a net gain of two to get back the Senate. You look at the four, I think that they got a realistic or somewhat realistic shot at Arizona. That's the one where, where they've had most consistently the lead. Florida is interesting because it raises the possibility, you know, Democrats absolutely love Andrew Gillum and the energy he brings. They may get him elected governor on the same day that Rick Scott takes out Bill Nelson mm -hmm. for the Senate. That is a very plausible outcome in Florida. So try to make sense of that one. So you, uh, you ever, help me out. The states that could go either way right now, right. either way, I have Missouri, Arizona, Nevada, Florida, West Virginia, Indiana, Tennessee, mm. perhaps on the outside, Texas. Texas. Have yeah. I missed any? Yeah, here's, this is the way I would look at it. If you had to rank them in, okay. in terms of the state. So Democrats needing a net gain of, uh, excuse me, Republicans trying to get gains here in those Democratic right. seats, North Dakota. I think the mm -hmm. single most vulnerable Democrat up is Heidi Heitkamp in North Dakota. The battle for number two, I think, is between Florida and Missouri. Mm -hmm. Who's more endangered right now? Is it McCaskill or is it Nelson? I'm starting to think Nelson might be, even though Florida is closer on paper. Because McCaskill's McCaskill. McCaskill survived a couple of she these really just, close races. Wins these yeah, races. And, and, and Scott is a very strong candidate there. Then I think, look, we had a poll last week in Montana. There had been some thinking that Tester had really kind of insulated himself. Poll mm -hmm. last week put him up only two. You look at the lean of that state. I think you know Montana, Indiana is sort of your next rung. And then you say West Virginia on paper. Mm -hmm. You know, just because it's such a big Trump state, but Mansion. The Mansion. polling has been oh done there. Gosh. Mansion has protected himself pretty well. So big, big you, know, you look on the flip rolling. side, That's it's just Trump. Arizona, yeah. Tennessee, Nevada, and maybe Texas for the pickup. So if if the Democrats just lose two from that first column that I gave you, they need to be gaining four. Mm -hmm. Well, that other column. John Heilman, we knew all along they had to run the board, but this is if it's a wave election, if it's a big blue wave election. Then you have, you know, 10, 11 races that could go either way. If it's more split down the middle, uh, we may not know uh, who, who's running uh, the Senate until Mississippi has its special election three weeks later. Yeah, that's right. I mean, look, I'm, and as Steve Kornacki knows, you know, this, this map has always been uh, difficult for Democrats. It's historically difficult for Democrats, maybe the most uh, uh, challenging map that we've ever seen in an off year or in a, in a midterm election on the Senate side. And so Democrats really do have to, would have to run the table and it really would have to be a big giant wave uh, for that to happen. But we now are in this incredible moment as we've been discussing earlier in the show. We're looking at Thursday right now right. where two gargantuan things could happen. One of which at least how the Supreme Court nomination plays out is going to directly affect one of the central dynamics of the voting behavior that we're looking at in these midterms, which is how women 
vote across the country in all of these states and certainly at the House level in a lot of key districts. So Republicans are, you know, on the on the, how the president decides to handle Rod Rosenstein and what the fallout from that is, how the Republicans decide to handle Brett Kavanaugh and what the fallout from that is. These are live issues that could contribute to either quelling the wave to some extent or making it even larger if it does exist. Yeah, you know, Caddy, uh, my favorite quote in politics, uh, former Illinois Senator Paul Simon, who said, they said, what did you learn in all your years in politics? He said, I learned a lot of times when you win, you lose, and when you lose, you win. This Kavanaugh nomination lines up more along uh, uh, sort of that thinking than anything I, I, I've, I've seen in recent history. If Republicans get their way, if Kavanaugh is steamrolled through, as Mitch McConnell says, that's an automatic motivator for every Democratic woman, every independent Absolutely. woman, and a hell of a lot of Democratic men and women. Whereas if Democrats block Kavanaugh, that's an awakening on the right, I think. And, and a lot of angry, motivated people saying, we're going to throw all the Democrats. Yeah, out. I mean, I've heard the argument mm. that if the Republicans don't get him through, that depresses Republican turnout because they're going to say, listen, if you can't even get a Supreme Court judge in, yeah. then we don't want to turn out. I think it does what you say. I think it galvanizes them because they've got to hold on to the Senate. I mean, if nothing else, they've really got to make sure they turn out to hold on to the Senate because they could have, be having this again. When you look at that list, Steve, um, to what extent are each of these local races and to what extent can they tell us something about the uh, nature of a wave on the Democratic side, if there is one. I'm thinking of Florida in particular. So we all, Andrew Gillum gets the nomination. We say, well, this is a far left candidate in, in Democratic terms. Um, but if he wins there, then you look at Bredesen, who's a kind of right down the middle, centrist, more conservative leading Democrat. Are we going to learn something about where the Democratic Party is going from each of these races? It, or yeah, not? It, oh, I, th I think it's, there's a couple interesting, there are a couple interesting tests there. One is in Florida, where if Rick Scott, the, the disparity you're seeing in these polls, where Gillum, the Democrat, is leading in the race for governor, and Scott is, is tied in some other polls leading in the race for the Senate, the big swing there is non-white voters. So Rick Scott is performing five points better in this newest poll, I think we just you showed a minute ago, it's up on the screen right there. Rick Scott Scott is performing five points better among Hispanic voters mm. than Ron DeSantis is in the governor's race. He's also performing a couple points better uh, among black voters than, than DeSantis is uh, among, uh, than, uh, against Gillum. One of the reasons is that Scott has made a very concerted effort in the last year after Hurricane Maria to win over Puerto Rico. He's taken many trips to Puerto Rico. He distanced himself immediately when President Trump made those comments about the death count. And, and Scott, you know, it, it's around the edges, but if in Florida you are performing, you know, half a dozen points better for for instance, uh, among Hispanic voters. That can make a difference. I, I was going to say, as a Florida native, or close to Florida native, Florida resident, how shocking. I, I've been shocked that Gillum has been comfortably ahead of DeSantis four or five points. That is the one swing state. I think we've talked about this before. The only swing state where Donald Trump is still doing well. Yeah. And, well, and it's interesting, too, because, look, we have to remember what we saw in 2016. I remember standing a few feet over from here on election night looking at those early numbers from Florida and saying the Democrats were getting what they needed out of those three counties, you know, uh, Broward, Miami-Dade, uh, Palm Beach. And then suddenly you saw a surge in the other part of the state. And DeSantis has aligned himself so closely with Trump, you know, certainly at least until a little bit of a friction in the last week. So you do wonder, would that sort of latent surge still be out there? But right now, uh, you know, Gillum, yeah, every poll I've seen has hit Andrew wow. Gillum ahead out there. Yeah, I certainly think it's Incredible. right that the, the two events on Thursday will be defining, at least somewhat for the yes. terms, the, the Kavanaugh hearings, of course, and then, and then, and then Rosenstein, uh, his fate decided at the White House. And certainly the White House has been nervous about having to be so aggressive about Kavanaugh, so fearful about how that, what that could do for female voters, how that could energize Democrats going the other way. But Gene Robinson, a question for you. If, if Rod Rosenstein, Deputy Attorney General, meets his fate on Thursday and he's dismissed, I think we can all agree that that will sort of further fire up Democrats. But how does it play the other way? How do you see his fate, one, whether he stays in the job or is, dis or is fired, how does that play with Republicans? Is that going to turn them out to the well, polls? Is, well, how does that work? Uh, that's a great question. And, and I, I mean, I think it probably plays well to the core Trump base. Um, but Republicans need more than the core Trump base if they're going to if they're going to uh, hold either House of Congress, to tell you the truth. I mean, they need uh, they need not just the core base. They need the rest of the Republican Party and they need some independence. But I think it, yeah, I think Trump has has uh, has prepared his base for anything he would do up to when 
including uh, firing Robert Mueller and, and putting us into the full-blown constitutional crisis. One, one, one other interesting thing uh, I think that we see in, in Steve Kornacki's numbers, and, and, and Steve, don't be, try not to be so angry. I, it, yes. it, it is it's it's really, an angry really man. should, should you know, just take Sam. a step back and a deep breath. But, um, but what, one thing we see in, in those numbers, I think, is that you know, if there's going to be, we talk about a wave or no wave, if there's going to be a Democratic wave, it's it, minority voters and women voters are going to be motivated to vote. They're going to come out and they're going to do it, basically. And you see in Florida where minority voters are um, uh, apparently motivated and, and have, um, you know, are going to vote. Um, uh, Gillum could win. Um, those other endangered Democrats uh, in the Senate need to find a way to energize that minority vote, energize that women's vote, uh, and, uh, and that's going to be the way they survive if they do. All right, Steve Kornacki and Eugene Robinson, thank you both and Steve, very much. We are giving you a gift certificate for a, a spa day. Yeah. Uh, just to sort of ease the tension. Yeah. No, and and I, I appreciate that the anger management classes haven't quite been getting it done. <laughs> we're, we're, out, we're, we're actually giving you a gift certificate, yeah. a lifetime gift certificate to Bliss and yeah. Rice Aroni. I love it. It's oh, okay. I'll, I'll take that. Okay. Congratulations <laughs> on the book, Red and Blue. Well, well thank it. you guys. Yes, All I, right. I appreciate that. Still ahead. Thanks for checking out MSNBC on YouTube and make sure you subscribe to stay up to date on the day's biggest stories and you can click on any of the videos around us to watch more for Morning Joe and MSNBC. Thanks so much for watching.